Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to ACAC. My name is Ross Owens. I'm an executive pastor here at Allegheny Center Alliance Church, and we are so happy that you are joining us for our day of racial, ethnic healing, and proclamation and celebration. Now, here at ACAC, many years ago, our church started off as a monocultural church here on the north side. It was actually such that when an African-American walked up to our doors to enter into the church, one of the ushers at the door would let the African-American know that their church was somewhere else. But through the efforts of our former pastor, Pastor Rock Delliman, he slowly began to turn, turn this church into a multi-ethnic community. So through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we saw our church transform. And not only did it transform our church as a congregation, but it began to transform the north side of Pittsburgh. So through those efforts, and after Pastor Rock has retired, our new lead pastor, Alan Hanna, we continue the banner that God started with of making sure that we worship in a multi-ethnic environment. So we are pleased to see multiple people from north, south, east, and west, not only here on the, in our community on the north side, but people coming as far as uh, Willing, West Virginia, come here to enjoy a multi-ethnic worship experience that is led by the Holy Spirit. So we are excited on a weekly basis to address those challenges of race, to address those challenges of diversity, and we do it all through a biblical manner. That is why we are here and excited about hosting this particular event today. So before we get started, I do want to open us up in prayer, and I do want to read a portion of scripture coming from John chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. And it reads this. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are, one, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. What we are reading here is Jesus' prayer that his believers will be as one. Please bow your heads and join me. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come together and to discuss such critical issues that are at the heart of our God. Lord, it is God's desire that we as a community be one. It takes work. It takes sacrifice. It takes the leading and the power of the Holy Spirit to do so. But God, as you can see by the people represented here, we are up for the challenge. It will require wisdom, patience. It will require a selfless effort on each and every person that is here. But it can be done, and we know that you will superintend this initiative. So I pray Lord, that we will see transformation, that we will, we will see racial divide begin to dissipate, and that your power, that your message of help, hope, and healing in Jesus' name will be spread throughout this city. So God, we pray that you give us the spirit and the, uh, that you give us the power to do what you have called us to do so that we can fulfill this scripture and be as one. And we pray all this in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Kathy Sigmund, who is the uh, founder of the Acts Initiative, which is an initiative of, uh, as part of our church here at ACAC. So please welcome Dr. Kathy Sigmund. Good afternoon, folks. It's good to see everyone here, and uh, we missed it by one day. Just think if we had scheduled this yesterday, uh, probably wouldn't see all your wonderful faces. Well, we are so blessed 
to have each and every one of you here. And so blessed um, by the privilege of having the city and our mayor uh, celebrate. We are celebrating the diverse ethnicity, the diverse racial grouping that we have here in our great city of Pittsburgh. So today, we celebrate the Greater Pittsburgh Day of Racial and Ethnic Healing Proclamation and Ceremony with all of you and all of those who are listening to us live stream. Some of you may be asking, where in the world did a day of racial healing happen? How did it come, come about and what's the history behind it? So I'm just gonna give a couple of sentences related to that. So the J.K. Um, Kellogg Foundation actually started and kicked off the National Day of Racial Healing back in 2016. It was an initiative out of one of their centers of transformation where they said, and we absolutely agree, we all need to come together and take responsibility for the ethnic and racial healing needed in our land. There's no way that any one of us can do this, but with all of us together, we can absolutely deal with, address, and help each other heal related to racial injustice, ethnic injustice, and those kinds of things that tear us apart. Many don't realize, we're so used to this whole concept of race, this whole concept of racism in our country. I mean, it's been there from the beginning. And many don't realize that as race has been constructed through various standpoints, whether it's supremacy of some kind or another, or what other issues, it can be deconstructed. But it's going to take all of us to deconstruct this racism and issues that we have um, so often plagued our land, whether it's individually or collectively within the various minoritized communities. And so, you know, applause to the Kellogg Foundation for taking this on. But also, it's a call to all of us, whether it's a faith-based organization or individuals or other organizations, we need to take this on to learn to love each other a bit more, to learn to not discriminate, to learn to be uh, more caring of those who are different than we are. And so on this podium, it says God is love. I firmly believe God is love. And I firmly believe God loves each one of us. And so we would like to, and I say we, and this is a <laughs> broad we, we would like to help each other learn to love across and within these ethnic racial lines. And so to do this, we needed to partner with a variety of different groups. And so one of those groups that we partner with and tackled, on, tackled the issue of racial inequities here in our city is Welcoming Pittsburgh. And what a phenomenal group to, part, to tackle such an issue. Welcoming Pittsburgh deals with those new incoming neighbors from all around the world and helping them to adjust to our city and our city to adjust to them. And so it was welcoming Pittsburgh and also through the efforts of Heal PA. And we have uh, Father Paul Abernathy with us, who's one of the co-chairs of an action team that I serve on, which is the Racial Communal Action Team. We also tackled this together with our friends from Welcoming Pittsburgh to come up with the idea of, hey, why don't we in the greater Pittsburgh area champion this effort of a National Day of Racial Healing. And so that brings us to today. And so again, we're so grateful to have each one of you with us, and we're so looking forward to the proclamation of our wonderful new mayor, the Honorable Ed Ganey. So I ask that you welcome him with applause as he gives the proclamation. Good afternoon, how's everybody? I don't think there's no, important, there's no more important work than what we're doing today. I think today is a great day when you talk about racial healing. You know, I always say one of the greatest things in the world is diversity. I couldn't imagine a world where we were all alike. But I love a world where everybody comes from different backgrounds and different perspectives. And then we have an opportunity to learn each other and love each other. To me, that's the greatest sign of God that we can give. And so as I read this proclamation, I just want to say this is an incredible day. And when we leave out of here, you know, I said this morning to make patience your friend and greet everybody in the name of patience. 
because I believe patience gives us that moment in time to learn each other. And in learning each other, we can learn to love one another. And to me, that's what the world is about. Whereas we understood, when we understand and recognize that there is a racial divide in our country, and that we must all work together to heal the wounds accumulated over hundreds of years and created by racial, ethnic, and religious bias, and to build an equitable and more just society that we can all thrive in. And whereas we have all witnessed racial division rising in America, urban, rural, suburban, and tribal communities, today that threatens the very core of our country's unity. And whereas, and whereas like those who came before us, it is our duty to protect the people of the Commonwealth and maintain communities in which they may all be given the opportunity to succeed. Whereas children have the right to be provide, whereas children have the right to be provided every opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive in nourishing environments that prioritize their safety, dignity, and humanity. And whereas every single person has the capability to make a simple change within themselves that can have a profound effect on the entire society. And whereas if we all dedicate ourselves to the principles of truth, racial healing, and transformation, we can all bring about the necessary change in thinking and behaving in a way that propels this commonwealth and this great nation forward and unifies all of us in the name of justice. I'm reminded that Martin Luther King said that in our struggle, society will always bend towards the arc of justice. And I believe that because when you think about where we've come from as a country, and that's not to say that we don't have a long way to go, but sometimes we need to just stop and reflect and think about how far we've come. The lines because we've come together that have been broken down. We have demonstrated that the love of God is in the challenge that's in front of us. And as long as we keep him first and understand that he created all, we will have an opportunity to continue to bring justice to America that will bring justice to the millions that will improve America in a way where everybody feels they have opportunity. If we just come together in that name, then we left the next generation a better America than we have right now. And for our ancestors that came before us, they left this for us. We got to pay it forward. So today they call it racial healing. But every day is racial healing. Because in America, this is how we get here. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Ed Ganey, Mayor of the City of Pittsburgh, do hereby proclaim January 18th, 2022, the Tuesday following Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, as a healing and transformation in the ways that are best suited for the individual as a means to working together to ensure the best quality of life for every child. Together we've always made change and together we will continue. God bless you and thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Ganey. Uh, when you have a day like this, it's not just one person or one group uh, that deserves recognition. Um, here within Axe Institute, uh, we partner with various community uh, partners and organizations, and uh, we just get it done that way. And we couldn't do it without our very many community partners. So I'm just going to mention a few names of folks that have been instrumental in working with us, both from Welcoming Pittsburgh, from Heal PA. There have been a number of folks that have been very instrumental in making these kinds of things happen within Axe Institute. Uh, so we have Ms. Faye Akintontola. Sorry, I know I messed her name up. She's not here. I'm not sure if she's traveling <laughs> to Nigeria back home or not, but she's from Welcoming Pittsburgh. We have Mr. Benedict Kalan and he's here on the stage uh, with United African Communities as well as our county office. Um, Reverend Dr. Brenda Gregg with Project Destiny and Thrive 18 and also represented here by uh, Daphne Corgis, Dr. Daphne Corgis. Uh, Mr. Awes Malalia from the Somali Bantu Community Association. 
of Pittsburgh, Mr. Cara Temsina from the Bhutanese Community Association of Pittsburgh, Reverend Blaine Workman representing uh, Allegheny Center Alliance Church and Axe Institute, Dr. William Yunus from Ansar, Ms. Hillary Holes from Healthcare Council of Western PA, Reverend Dr. Retta Ibrahim from the Arabic Church of Pittsburgh, Ms. Bethany Blackburn from Northside Christian Health Center, uh, Mr. Siraji Hassan, United Somali Bantu Association, Father Paul Abernathy from the Neighborhood Resilience Project, Mr. Kier Mukawansat Niza, and I always pronounce his name right, please forgive me, Kier, um, with the Allegheny Health Network, Mr. Benoit Kahumbu with uh, the Congolese Union of Pittsburgh, Dr. Angela Angelica Perez Johnston with the Latino Community Association, Ms. Marcia Martin with Gateway Health. And we just want, I just want to thank these people, give them a round of applause for all the work that they have done. Uh, now you will hear from Mr. Benedict Kalan with Allegheny County Department of Human Services, Immigrant and International Advisory Council. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm here to read the Allegheny County uh, Proclamation for the Day of Healing, uh, for, the day of, uh, for this day. So uh, whereas this year, the National Day of Racial Healing is being celebrated on January 18, 2022, and it's recognized annually on Tuesday following Martin Luther King Jr. Day, launched in 2017. The day was dis designated as such to begin a dialogue and forge a path towards equality and in recognition that racial healing is at the core of racial equity. And whereas we understand and recognize that there is a racial divide in our country and have witnessed racial divisiveness rising in America's urban, rural, suburban, and tribal communities. The National Day of Racial Healing provides an opportunity for all of us to contemplate our shared values and celebrate a blueprint together for how we heal from the effects of racism. And whereas knowing the work begins with each individual, group, and community, we must all work earnestly to heal the wounds created by racial, ethnic, and religious bias and build an equitable and just society so that all can thrive, especially children. We encourage all in our community to find a unique, meaningful, and relevant ways to honor the day by affirming our common humanity and inspiring collection action towards a more just and equitable world. And whereas not only on the National Day of Racial Healing, but throughout the year, we should find ways to reinforce and honor our common humanity and vibrant and create a space to celebrate the distinct differences that make us, our communities, vibrant. We also must recognize that there are still deep racial divisions that must be overcome and healed. And whereas, if we commit ourselves to encouraging people from all racial, ethnic, religious, and identity groups, and genuinely work to increase understanding communication, caring, and respect for one another, we can propel our county and county forward and ensure the best quality of life for every child and call ourselves home to communities where each person is given the opportunity to succeed. Now, therefore, be it resolved, of course, that the county exact rich for general by virtue of the authority vested in him, do hereby proclaim January 18th, 2022, as National Day of Racial Healing in Allegheny County, and encourage our residents to take time to celebrate our common humanity and take collective action to create a more just 
and equitable society. In witness whereof I have here and to set my hand and cause the seal of the county of Allegheny to be affixed this 18th day of January 2022. Thank you. And so folks, uh, finally, one last proclamation. I just want to applaud you for being able to sit through all these proclamations. It's not the easiest thing. Now, this proclamation is uh, very special. Um, it's special to me because it's not coming from a huge uh, foundation like the Kellogg Foundation. I think it's like the fifth largest foundation in the world. It's not coming just from our governmental leaders, and we praise God for them. We thank God for, for our governmental leaders. But this proclamation is coming um, from in many ways, a very biblical perspective. So I'm going to apologize on the one hand um, for those who are um, not faith-based or not of the Christian understanding, because I'm not trying to just throw this on you, but I do wanna, want you to hear the heart. One of the things that I have been extremely frustrated about in our country um, is that uh, oftentimes the church has just stood by as we've had significant racial issues. And it's been heartbreaking because I believe, and I think that most of us here believe God loves everybody, right? And so how is it that the place that's supposed to be his house um, could be so discriminatory? And so this proclamation is aimed at the church. Um, and this proclamation is aimed at um, those who would embrace a Christian tradi tradition, but if you want to embrace it, if you don't want to embrace a Christian tradition, that's fine too. Um, so some of the comments, the vast majority of this is based on the Christian and Missionary Alliance uh, statement on justice and race. Um, but I do want to read it to you as a statement that maybe some other churches, maybe some other faith groups would want to consider and embrace. We believe God intends for all people to flourish together in harmonious unity. The triune God does not create alone, but in community. And in community, humanity reflects the image of God. The image of God in community is expressed in diversity. And that's quoting from Genesis 1, 27, Colossians 3, 9 through 11. We believe only in sacrificial relationship with one another is unity found. God intends that humanity fill the earth, expressing his glory in a diversity of languages and cultures. We believe when sin entered the world, shame distorted and devastated community, resulting in a lust for power, domineering hierarchy, subjugation, and violence. We believe, as centuries progressed, the expanse of hubris of colonization also oppressed those who were different. In our own nation, this colonization included the genocide of native peoples and chattel slavery of Africans, justified with a system of racial hierarchy that was seen by some as biblical. Some of the ways racial supremacy has been expressed are the displacement of Native Americans, vagrancy laws of reconstruction period, Jim Crow laws of segregation, ongoing discrimination against Hispanics, exclusions of Chinese immigrants, internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, redlining and housing codes, and disproportionate criminalization of communities of color. And this is to name a few. We believe the church too often continues to be complicit in and even perpetrators of such racial hierarchy and inequality. When we fail to connect issues of justice to the gospel, the church lags instead of leads in matters of race and justice. We believe as the light of the world, we are called to lead, not lag, in matters of race and justice. The image of God in all humanity compels us to embrace and promote racial equality and advocate for justice for those whose voices might otherwise be ignored. We believe, uh, sorry, thus, Axe Institute in conjunction with others throughout the United States of America and globally acknowledges the Tuesday following Martin Luther King Jr. Day as the global day of racial, ethnic healing and prayer. We believe none of this is gonna happen without prayer. 
We believe none of this is going to happen without us coming together and loving on one another and being a model of what God calls is love. So therefore, we urge our academic, church, community, and ministry partners to promote racial, ethnic healing and transformation in ways that are best suited for them as a means to working together to re reflect God's incarnational love and compassion to all. Now, therefore, Acts Institute does hereby proclaim the Tuesday following the Martin Luther King Jr. Day as the global day of racial, ethnic healing and prayer. And I do want to just make a comment about the global. Because a lot of times when we think of racism, we are focused here on the United States. We're focused in what happens here in the US. And oftentimes that's just black, white, or, or whatever. But racism, at least from my standpoint, is a global issue because we have sin and fallenness as a global issue. So whether it's happening here or whether it's happening somewhere in Asia or Africa or someplace in Europe, you're going to have racism no matter where you have people because you have this fallenness. It's going to take the grace of God working in all of us to overcome and to address racism. And it's going to take all of us loving on each other regardless of our differences and making sure that we are embraced by God's love and embraced by each other. Thank you. Well, Dr. Kathy Sigmund, thank you very much for your efforts in leading this initiative through the Acts um, Institute. In closing, I would like to say thank you guys for coming. Our efforts to address racial healing starts with you. It begins with us as a community putting our desires to the side. It requires us to listen, to empathize, not to always agree, but to love. Love those who look different than you, have a different ethnicity than you, someone whose political views are different than yours. It requires us to love. And it requires us to show love to others the way that God shows love to us. Like Dr. Sigmund said, we all sin. We're all born into sin. But the unconditional agape love that God shows us is the same kind of love that we can and should show others. And when we do that as a community, when we own love toward one another, we begin to see change happen, not only here in our community, but around the globe. So as we go about our day, let's make sure that we recognize the unconditional love that God shows us so we can share that unconditional love with everyone we meet. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for loving us even when we did not love you. It is that unconditional love, God, that um, allows you to leave the 99 and chase after us. And because of that, you invite us into a relationship with you. So, Heavenly Father, we need your help to do that amongst one another. Help us to recognize the love that you showed us so that we can show others that love and invite them into a relationship, not only with us, but with the broader, broader community. It's that love that will tear down racial divide. It's that love that will allow us to become one community despite our backgrounds, our political views, and our beliefs. So God, I pray that we own that love, that we are intentional about showing that love to everyone we meet despite the divide that is in our community today. Help us to love people and to love them well. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming out.